present, the icon is being restored in a Marian monastery in Montenegro. The knight's ability to adapt to complete change turned defeat into a success that lasted 200 years. When the knights made their descent on Rhodes in 1306, Thauraklos was the first fortress from which they raised the banner of St. John. The Knights of Rhodes withstood several Ottoman sieges. In 1480, the island was besieged by the vanquisher of Constantinople. After 89 days, the Sultan Mahomet the Great folded his tents and sailed for home in disgrace. When Suleiman the Magnificent appeared off Rhodes with 700 warships and 200,000 men, it looked as if he might suffer the same fate as his predecessor. But the battle lines between Christendom and the Ottoman Empire had shifted hundreds of miles. All the knights could usefully do was move to a new position on that line. Treason in the knight's own camp caused the final capitulation of Rhodes. Grandmaster Philip Villiers de Lille Adam, with the usual number of 500 knights and 6,000 soldiers, held out for six months. On a cold January 1st in 1523, a single trumpet sounded the fall of Rhodes. The hospitalers took little with them to show for over two centuries of power and triumph at sea. Only their personal belongings, their holy relics, and their many wounded. Time and man have conspired to destroy the castles and temples. A gaunt sentinel, Falraklos, was the last hospitaller outpost to surrender. Over 5,000 years old, Malta lies in the Mediterranean Sea, halfway between Europe and Africa. The Knights arrived here in the early 16th century, and Malta abounds with their massive urban buildings, in the fortifications they built to guard their harbors, and in a city of their design. The Knights left their last permanent impression on civilization here. Valletta is a bouquet of their final flowering. The knights were divided by the languages they spoke. Each nationality built itself an auberge or residence. they erected a great house for the Grand Master. These palaces survive today and give the city an architectural distinction which rivals cities many times its size. The Order of St. John ruled supreme here for nearly 270 years.
under the discipline of the warrior monks, Malta emerged into fame and opulence. The knights instilled the magic of their era in the beauty of their art, in the Baroque churches, and in their cathedrals. On a map of the world, Malta is no larger than a speck of dust. Yet on the horizons of history, it looms grand indeed. In 62 AD, St. Paul brought Christianity to Malta. I am Father John Azzopardi from Rabat, Malta here. And I am a canon of this collegiate chapter. We are at St. Paul's Grotto, the core of Christianity in Malta a sacred spot where uh, St. Paul lived when he was under arrest for three months in Malta in all the old documents. This church, which is very old, has been referred to as St. Paul outside the walls because the Roman city, which extended to here, had a ditch and St. Paul had one of these caves where he was held. So it is a very sacred spot which has been visited throughout the ages by hundreds and thousands of scholars, visitors, pilgrims. The last important one of which was Pope John Paul II when he was here in 1990. The place has been very dear also to the Knights of St. John. The Knights of St. John, when they came to Malta in 1530, did their very best to have this sanctuary under their position. It served them for several purposes. First of all, out of deep devotion, because the order was a religious order. Grand Master Alof de Winyakor did all his best to acquire St. Paul's Grotto together with the Church of St. Paul's Bay under his possession, because it gave him the opportunity to enter into the heart of the Maltese people and to have something apostolic, to have something connected with the visit and with the presence of an apostle in the Counter-Reformation era was very important, very prestigious. There had always been the belief that there was a place for women in the tradition of the orders of chivalry. The convent of the Blessed Gerard maintained a hospital for women, as well as an order of nuns. I am the mother prior, and my name is Sister Lucia Aquilina. Our monastery was built in 1583 by Grandmaster Vidala. We descend from a convent in Spain. The Spanish order was established when the knights were on roads. They wore the eight-pointed white cross and took vows of obedience to the master of the hospital. When roads fell, the nuns changed the color of their habit from red to black. Seven years after the fall of Rhodes, Emperor Charles V granted Malta and its dependencies to the Order of St. John of Jerusalem. Survivors of the Crusades, the Hospitallers had gone from a nursing brotherhood to a military order, from a land-based defensive power to a sea-based offensive power. They had outlived the other military orders and now they would stand as Europe's last defense against the Ottoman Empire. The rock on which Fort St. Angelo is built has always commanded the Great Harbor. In ancient times, the great temple of the goddess Astarte stood here.
700 years before Christ, the Greeks drove the Phoenicians from Malta, and 300 years later, were in their turn driven out by Hannibal of Carthage. The Romans dispossessed the Carthaginians and were in their turn succeeded by the Byzantines. By 870 AD, the Arabs held the island and built a castle on this rock. They used the original temple for the foundation of the walls. The Knights of St. John arrived 500 years later in 1530 and Grand Master Delil Adam established his residence and headquarters in the castle's great house. The Grand Master knew that Fort St. Angelo would be the bedrock of the Christian defense. The Knights lost no time in seeing to their defenses. They knew the Turks would not rest until the order had been driven out of Malta. Towering bastions and batteries were constructed to provide a platform from which the order's heavy guns could defend the harbor entrance. The Knights were rebuilding Fort San Elmo when the Turkish Armada was sighted. They had run out of time. Grandmaster Fra Jean Lavalette was considered by the Turkish commander Dragut to be the greatest soldier of his time. Having 50 years in the service of the order, he resigned himself that the knights must not look to others for their deliverance. It was only on God and their swords they could rely. The Siege of Malta is one of the greatest epics of military history. The Knights had two advantages absent on roads. The bareness of Malta and the Turkish lines of communications were stretched so far that they could not lay siege through winter. The island must be reduced in a single summer campaign. The Ottoman Turkish force of 40,000 men landed on May 19th. Those at Lavalette's command, 540 Knights, 400 Spanish troops, and some 4,000 Maltese. Against a large army with all the machineries of siege, their chances were almost hopeless. Yet it was the Knights' achievement to defend these positions for almost four months. seemed lost, but the firing stopped, and the Turks retired. The news of the death of the Turkish commander, Dragut, reached the Grand Master through a deserter. There would be another three months of dying and destruction, but the loss of Dragut broke the spirit of the Turkish forces. the landing of a small relief force, siege was broken. 